Hi and welcome. So this time around we've got an interesting project from my brother-in-law again. Uh, for fishing, uh, apparently if you want to do night fishing and you want to track the fish, one of the good ways to do it is to have a light underwater because the fish will come to it. So we basically want to build one of these that works down to about 50 feet, which is about 24 PSI. So I've got some aluminum stock here. I've got some X gaskets. I've got a center aluminum piece. Uh, we're gonna take some high intensity LED chips and mount them on the center piece. Uh, we're going to uh, groove trepan into the faces of these guys, a slot that will let this fit in, as well as the gaskets. And unfortunately, if you'll notice, this is not uh, extremely round. Notice how much difference the thickness is this side than this side. So that might provide some uh, challenges, uh, which I'm not sure how I'm gonna deal with. 0.269 versus 0.248. Yeah, all over the place, that's just great. So I guess acrylic is not uh, extremely accurate when they extrude it. Hopefully I can find a better piece or we'll go with this one. So. Um, I'm using X gaskets because they have two sealing surfaces instead of one. They're good for dynamic situations, but also static. This is going to be static because what I'm going to do is I am going to machine the center of this triangular so that I can put the uh, LED chip arrays on it. And then I'm going to thread both ends of it, which will thread into the top and bottom and pull the top and bottom together to sandwich this in between, hopefully sealing it adequately. Before we head over to the lathe to trepan out the groove for the acrylic tube and trepan the groove for the gasket, uh, I thought I would, uh, I printed a scale drawing, so this is a one-to-one -one drawing. The red lines here are the gasket, the blue lines are the outside dimensions of the acrylic tube in an ideal world. However, um, well, let's see if you can see this. When I line this guy up, So I don't know how easy this is for you to see, but the acrylic tube, there's, first we should go over two kinds of acrylic you can buy typically. Um, the first one is extruded, and extruded is not particularly good for machining, not particularly dimensionally stable, and not as good for optical clarity. Then there is the cast acrylic tube, which is what this is, which is supposed to be better. But when I looked up dimensions online, I was really disconcerted on one of the sites. I bought this through a third party retailer, so they didn't have any dimensions. But acrylic tube in the quarter inch wall like this is, uh, is often specced, at least on the couple sites I found, like plus or minus 37 thousandths. And if you look down here, the blue line is the internal. And uh, you can see that uh, this is not perfectly round inside. And as a result, I am going to have to change the dimensions of the groove that this fits into because you can even see up here that the thickness differs between here and here. It's much thinner over here and thicker over here. Uh, thicker here, thinner here. You can see that difference. It's pretty obvious just even with the naked eye without measuring. So I'm not going to be able to make a very tight fitting hole. I'm probably going to have to go like plus or minus five thousandths because I was looking at the outside dimension as well. Let me pull back. So if I line up one side, it goes over in spots on the other side, and I need to figure out by about how much, because I am going to have to make the groove wide enough to compensate for that. And maybe what I'll do is just uh, start trepanning and, and then uh, adjust it, adjust the size as I go. I'm gonna start with like five thousandths over my initial measurements, and we'll go from there. So. Anyways, we can head over to the lathe. This was a useful experiment. Uh, the beauty of laser printers and inkjet printers today is that uh, they're so accurate that you can print scale models and have really good estimates of how things are gonna fit uh, when they're done. All right, so the first uh, issue we run into when we're trying to do a face groove, um, I wanna go a quarter inch in for the, uh, the outer groove that's gonna hold the acrylic tube, and then I wanna go another uh, distance in, which I don't remember off the top of my head, uh, for the O-ring groove, or the X-ring in my case. So when you're using a normal parting tool like this one, and you plunge straight in, if you do anything more than just the tip, the supporting structure under the tip is gonna start to run into the material. You'll see here at very small diameters that the diameter I'm cutting, 
this sticks out much farther down than the, even the diameter I'm cutting. So as a result, when I try and plunge in, the bottom of this is gonna run into the material that hasn't even been cut yet. And even out here on fairly large ones, um, the, the material I'm cutting is curving in. So the straight bottom of this is gonna run into the, into the part if you do anything more than a shallow groove. So here's an extreme one. This one's for 25 to 30 millimeters. And you can see that they curve the support structure under the carbide cutter. And that way it is out of the way when you plunge in and I can plunge in fairly deeply. But the cutter only works between 25 and 30 millimeters. So I have a trepanning cutter here that is good from 100 to 140 millimeters. And the small size is just a little bit under and I am gonna try and squeak by. I might not actually succeed. Uh, we'll find out if the bottom of this starts, uh, starts rubbing. Uh, we'll know that I have blown it. Uh, what I really need is the 80 to 100 cutter, but I don't have it. I have to use my height checker that I made quite a few videos ago, one of the first projects I ever made, to set the uh, tool post cutter height on dead center. So in order to get my, my x-axis zero set, I'm going to bring the tool in and just touch off on the outside of this part. Then I'm going to measure this diameter very carefully, divide by two, and set that number in my DRO, and that will tell me how far from the center I am so I can find zero and work back out. Um, if I was going the other way and my tool was mounted on this side going in, then what I was gonna do is I have this uh, part that I made cut very carefully along the center line. It was for another project, but I mounted it in an ER40 chuck, collet chuck, then I align it very carefully using a square, and then I bring my tool in, just touch off on the surface, and that will be zero because this plane right here is the center line of the part. So I've determined the radius to be 2.451, and now I've got some 21 thousandths shim sock in here, and we're just gonna bring the cutter up and it's the, the sharp edge of it's on the center line. So this should be my zero. We can go in 21 thousandths. <laughs> Almost screwed up. My zero, since this is a radial distance, it's actually double that uh, for uh, di diameter, which is what my DRO is set to read in. So what I should have gone in is an additional 21 thousandths or a total of 42 thousandths. And that should put me right at zero, which it looks like it is, perfect. Then I go in the 4.902 on my DRO, which is the diameter reading, 4.902. And that looks like it's right on the pip. So, it was important to get my zero set correctly, and I gotta remember that my DRO is set for diameter, not radially, so I don't screw up when I go out. Because I'm looking for my first radius. Let me go grab the drawing. We'll start with the outside diameter first. That way, the relief of the tool that shouldn't work for smaller diameters will have a self-created relief, hopefully. Hopefully it won't run into it. I think it might. I might have to get the right tool before I can do this. Um, so we're going to start with 3.998, which is actually within the range of that uh, tool. And here's where I need to get careful. So I looked on my DRO and I set the diameter to the outside diameter, but remember I'm referencing the inside of the cutter. That means that I'm going to have the whole thickness of the cutter on the outside. So I need to go in twice the thickness of the cutter uh, diameter wise, because this is a radial distance that it's incorrect, and uh, we should then be correct. That's better. So we want to go in a total of quarter of an inch. So let's see if we run into. Oh, looks like we're going to clear. Oh, 
All right, so it's uh, catching on the inside diameter over here. It's kind of snug. I'm just gonna take off five thousandths on the inside here. Bet now we're gonna hit on the outside, huh? <laughs> yeah, the thick spot is, and it just as I rotate this, it just moves where it's not uh, fitting. So. We're going to come out and do a couple more thousandths on the outside as well. Next up, we're going to do the O-ring groove and we're going to go into a final depth of 3.72 from this outside face. We might need a little loop for this. My cutter has been uh, loading up a little bit. And we should be good. So I know it's hard for you to see because the aluminum's so shiny, but there is a groove inside of the groove and I just need to uh, clean up these corners a little bit. Next up, we need to drill and bore uh, three quarter inch depth. I'm using an end mill to make a flat bottomed hole. And I'm gonna take it in most of the distance and then bore out the rest. It's a two flute, and I pre-cut most of the center for it so that it doesn't have to center cut. Obviously using an end mill and a drill chuck is not ideal, but this is just a roughing operation. Next up, we're going to try uh, something a little crazy. We're going to try tapping with uh, a 114, 14 threads per inch, one inch tap. And uh, this might be a bit aggressive to do by hand. I'm not quite sure. Maybe I wanted to single point these. I, I don't know how hard it's going to be, but we're about to find out. So I ended up uh, cutting a quarter inch of back relief because this tap obviously can't go all the way to the bottom. Uh, it wasn't a bottoming tap, so I removed the end of it and made it close to a bottoming tap. It's gonna make it harder to start next time, uh, but I made sure there were good threads for at least a half an inch. So this one's done, time to move on to the second part. And this completes the second one. So this is gonna be the top, the other one's gonna be the bottom. This is the thicker part just turned around. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill and tap for a half inch 20 hole here. And uh, this is the tap drill. It's a 29 60 fourths. And uh, what I'm gonna do, this is one of these DeWalt uh, center, auto center finding drill bits. I'm gonna grind off this whole center section so I can make a flat bottomed uh, cutter because I wanna go in a half an inch and have threads as much of that as possible. Um, I only have three quarters of an inch to the hole on the other side. This would probably come very close to reaching it. So uh, instead, I'm going to go grind this off, and then I'll have no center cutting capability. But I, what I will do is I will uh, drill with a quarter inch drill first, or a quarter inch end mill, uh, all the way in, and uh, follow it with this guy. So I've ground that whole center section off to make a flat bottomed hole, and we'll see how well this works. But first, we've got to drill with a quarter inch end mill. All right, so we're going to go in six tenths of an inch. Okay, that's the 0.6. All right, so we're going in with this modified drill bit. So far, so good. I did a 3 8 inch hole, so it only has to cut the outside. Okay, all right, we're going with one within with half inch 20 here. And uh, this is not a bottoming tap, so I'm gonna modify one of my other taps to be a bottoming tap, because this only goes in 6 tenths of an inch which is not terribly deep. I will say that it's a hell of a lot easier than the one inch 14. <laughs> finer pitch threads don't cut as deep, among other things. I was looking for a finer pitched one inch, but I couldn't find it. Took a regular tap and took off most of the bottom threads. And uh, we're gonna use this to bottom tap the same hole. 
All right, half inch 20 hole completed. This part is completed. We'll pop it out of the four jaw and we are all done. All righty, so this is the end of part one. I've got the two parts done. This is the top with the half inch uh, 20 threads that will have a an adapter that will grab on the uh, extension cord that I'm wired that I'm going to be using. The extension wire cord will go through the glands here. I don't know whether I'm going to use the plastic or the metal ones. Probably the metal ones to start, but I'm not sure. These are good to 70 psi. Uh, we're only going to hit 20, so that should be good. Um, I haven't drilled the hole for the gland for the uh, gland cable entrance yet uh, because I want to pressure test this. So after I make the next piece, which is uh, this guy right here, um, it's a threaded portion that has the LED mounts. Once I do that, um, then I'll be able to pressure test just this assembly and look for leaks. So right now, this is how this guy goes together. So the O-rings go there and there. Let's see if I can just gently pop them in. When I put them in, I'll actually be using something like petroleum jelly uh, to make sure that uh, they can handle the rotation forces when I'm tightening up the one end. I also need to clean this part up. So this, I've got to figure out how to hold in the jaw and clean up this face or something because it needs to be trimmed to size. And I want the scratches on it. Right now the scratches go this way, which is no good because that'll let water come right in. Um, I want the scratches to go around the circumference. So that way the water won't come in. Um, interestingly enough, you can like take a, uh, a scraper and scrape this down till it's fairly smooth, then take an oxyacetylene torch and run it really quick around this and get a, a finish like this on the outside here. But they actually recommend against it for the, uh, the gasket people, uh, O-ring, because they say that it'll grab too much and that won't be good. So if you're wondering how this goes together, it's still a little Still a little bit snug, goes like that, and like that, and there it is. Um, we'll find out how watertight it is after. I use really thick, heavy piece of aluminum because I'm trying to compensate for all the air that's going to be inside, buoying it up. So this is to help it sink uh, quickly and efficiently. Hopefully that'll work. So that's the end of part one. Part two, like I said, we'll make the other part hopefully pressure test it, and maybe even get it to light up. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.